and welcome to another video. It's not really pleasant weather, but it's better than it was in St Helens when I left there, that's for certain. So I'm heading up to the northeast coast to the very tip of it near Muscle Road Bay. So there's a place up there called Petal Point and um, a couple of campgrounds there that I'm going to check out and uh, have a look at. And uh, yeah, hopefully the weather improves. So yes, this is where I'm heading, up to the point up there. So there's Petal Point up there. And uh, Muscle Road Bay is over to this side, Little Muscle Road Bay. So I'll have a look at them. And then there's Swan Island out there as well. So got a lighthouse on it. I'm not going to go out to it, of course, but I'll certainly try and get a look at it. There we go, camp's nicely set up, perfect spot. Hopefully I'll get the uh, sun on me camp early in the morning rather than having a tree in front of it, so that'll be different. And this here must be the uh, track to the beach. I was actually just talking to a gentleman who came in in his four-wheel not four -wheel drive, his motorhome, and he said, he used to come here years ago and this area used to be all open up and camping so and according to wiki camps i'm not actually at pedal point campground so i'm going to go and have a look when i get back from a beach walk and see what goes on well as you can see i've changed campsites so i went for a walk found a toilet found some more campsites found the boat ramp which is just around here and off to the side was this campsite it's uh, about the same wind as where I was but once the wind dies down and that's a view out to Lemon Beach I couldn't pass that up so and it actually didn't take me too long to pack up I actually had packed up moved and set up in half an hour I mean I didn't pack up completely but uh, I did it real quickly so yeah what a view And as usual, it is just outstanding, outstanding over an open fire.
well good morning and what a beautiful morning that is it's just what do we got it's just on seven o'clock and I've already taken my jacket off it's just beautiful winds died down just the ocean so yeah anyway I'm gonna go for a bit of an explore today see if I can find the uh, petal point ruins I know they're around here somewhere but um, before I go I'm gonna have myself breakfast so today I'm gonna try this now I don't need to have this certainly not in my camper trailer but in the next few weeks I'm gonna try something different I'm not going to tell you about it now, I'm just going to wait until I um, do it. And taking these along is going to be the thing to do because they're going to have to go light. So, it's about 500 mils. Stir it up. And push the air out and seal it up. Well, I've let it stand for 10 15 minutes, so let's. See what we got. Cook breakfast. What's the verdict? It's not bad. You gotta mix it up nice though. I missed well, I missed a, quite a portion on the side there, so I had to throw that out. But um very filling. Probably not as good as bacon and eggs, but for the purpose that I've got them for that I'm going to do the next trip I do. Um, yeah, I reckon they'll do well, but I'll probably buy the smaller version, not the big version. So I've come to the uh, wind farm information building, visitor centre. So it's also the Tabrakana, I think, anyway, Aboriginal Cultural Centre talks about the Aboriginals and what happened to them. Now it's home to wind turbine farm. There's 56 of them. They're 80 meters high to the turbine and the blades are 46 meters long. And they're noisy. I mean, they're really noisy. I would hate to live right underneath one, that's for certain. Still not convinced that they're the solution to everything. But anyway, that's another subject. So out here off the coast is Swan Island. That's actually where the Aboriginals were deported to. They ended up on Flinders Island as well. So out on the horizon, we have Cape Barren Island, Lady Barren Island, and Flinders Island. And a couple of smaller islands out there as well. It's not the clearest of views. And there's one of the blades. Like I said, 46 metres long. They operate when the wind gets up to 4 metres per second or about 12 kilometres an hour and then they shut down when it gets to 90 kilometres an hour. So this here is the little Muscle Row Bay Conservation Lagoon and camping area but it's only open from Christmas to Easter. No camping beyond this point. Down that road there's a few private residences and a boat ramp but not much else so we'll go for a walk in there and see what we can find. So that's Little Muscle Row Lagoon. Pretty windy here. No camping beyond that point, shack residence only. Nice little campsite but uh, could get quite windy in here. Just have a walk up here and see what I can find up this way as well. The nice little flat areas, that's for certain. And I suppose, yeah, if you get in behind the trees here, it's not too bad. Yeah, so that's the end of the campground. There's quite a few spaces in here, I'd say probably 10 or 20, but mostly tent sites. You could get a uh, my camper trailer in here certainly. Uh, the road sign back further says nothing over eight meters so So I was going 
going to go to Muscle Row Bay, but um, I looked at it and thought, it's pretty dry here. So I went down to Gladstone and I went in on the road that takes me to the Dorset Dredge. And yeah, I could get through the big puddle that I couldn't get through last time. So I went in and had a look. It's an abandoned tin mine, but um, you can't really um, figure out and there's no directions to it. So I went into town and I asked the lady there and she was pretty vague about it. So I've watched a couple of YouTube videos on it. And um, most people have found it by flying a drone over. So I'm heading back out to this location and I'm going to fly my drone around and see if I can find it. If not, um, yeah, I'll have to do a lot more research on it because um, there's no actual directions on how to find it. Yeah, so this is the road that takes us down to the abandoned tin mine and this is the road that I came down on last time. I got down here a bit further and there was a huge puddle which I couldn't see the bottom of and uh, so I abandoned that idea of um, trying to uh, get through that and get to this Dawson Dredge. So the only thing now is the lady said there was a sign on a tree saying Dredge. So I'll have a look for that. If not, I'll just get my drone up. Well this is the abandoned tin mine. And uh, I never saw a sign on a tree saying dredge, so I'll put the drone up here and see what I can find. So this is just some of the machinery left here from the abandoned tin mine. I've already got rid of most of it. So after two batteries on me drones, one for me Mavic and the other one for the FPV, and a 30 minute firmware update which was as frustrating as hell I have not been able to find the dredge um, and I was out probably over to my right a long way and nah. so I'm gonna have to do a lot more homework on it because the people in the shop they got no idea where it is they just say it's out here somewhere and the people on YouTube videos that I've seen they are not giving it away either well I've managed to find the sign on the tree. Actually, it's a sign near a tree that says Dredge. I was heading out and there was a road off to the left, so I thought I'll, I'll give it a crack. So I came down it, and sure enough, there was a sign saying Dredge. So I thought, beautiful, I found it. Well, I was able to drive down about two, 300 metres, and um, I ran into a little bit of water, so I stopped. And there's a bloke up here who's got his vehicle parked on the side. I know why he stopped. I'll show you why. This is why he stopped here. Because he's not going any further and risking going through that. So I've locked up my car now. And um, I'm going to see how far it is. But I think it's about 2 or 3k in. So... So I ran into the people that uh, had the ute there. Said it was about two odd k's to go, so decided to do it. So, But I must be getting close. Big steel cable along the track, obviously for some thing. And then you got bits and pieces of machinery and stuff in the pipes, rubber, rubber hose bits of steel over here so and there it is I don't think it's as big as El Dorado but uh, she's still pretty good size I was able to get around this part here up on the left it gets a bit shallow and I was able to cross it on some logs and such but uh gives me a better view of it one of the pontoons in um must have sunk and that's why it's turned over now so anyway i'll find out that information and uh put it up so i've just had a look on the internet about it it was originally built in victoria 
disassembled and shipped to Tasmania and reassembled at Dorset. Flats mine, around 1943, operated between 1944 and 1980, moved to its current location in 1962 and ceased operation in 1980 and it was moved here to be um, maintained after several floods and many parts having been removed from the dredge by neighbouring mines and salvages it became unstable and capsized in 1988 which now rests in peace on its side in the lagoon near the abandoned tin mines so there's a brief history of it and just before I leave, this is the underside of it, and you can see the uh, gap in there, and that's where the dredge buckets came out. Went down underground, dug out the soil, and then it came up onto the other side and was processed. That's how it worked. There we go, tonight's dinner is served. Nicely cooked on the open fire. Well, I made it to 9.30 at night. It's raining a bit and the fire's pretty much out, but uh, did a bit of night photography, but uh, time for bed. This is a very popular spot that I've got here. Since I came back at about only three o'clock, I've had three people come in here and have a look at it. And one like just, 10 minutes ago and I heard him say oh I booked this spot but uh, there's no such thing as bookings here it's first in best dress so he can have it tomorrow anyway been a busy day I'm tired time for bed see you in the morning Yes, well, I put the drone up, but uh, I couldn't really find anything, and it's a lot of bush out there too, so I'll have to do some more research on it and um, see if I can find it on maps. Or well, hopefully someone can give me directions because it's a bit like the Dorset Dredge. The directions are pretty vague. There's one lady saying, oh, yes, we walked up the beach and we went to this, the ruins, uh, and there's a... Womp, 
or something like that. And I'm thinking, there's about 10 swamps out the back there. So, now I have to do some research. So, I'll head back to camp now and slowly pack up and uh, head on back to uh, Scamander. So when I came in, I first camped there and then I end up camping there. So, and over the other side from the toilets, that's where you're supposed to park for caravans and big motorhomes. So, counting it up, there's 11 sites plus what is in the um, caravan, big caravan area, and one toilet. Here I am, back where I started from. And I just actually seen there's a little symbol there for the Dorset Dredge, so I should have come over here and had a better look at that. So and it does say Pedal Point Ruins up there, but it doesn't actually specify there is an X there, but I don't know whether that's for the actual campground or what. So yeah, do some uh, exploration on that one. I just noticed there's an emu on in the paddock right next to the shop here. He's not too worried about me. Yes, so anyway, I'm at the Gladstone shop now. I'm just going to grab myself a cuppa and maybe something to eat. And then I've got to go back that way, back that way to uh, go to Anson's Bay home, a bit shorter way. Yeah, so anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. My next video, yes, it's going to be a bit different than what I've done before, so I'm not going to say what it is. You'll just have to wait until the next video comes out. I said that's it for this video. If you like my channel, consider subscribing to it. And if you possibly could, share it to see your social media because that would really help me out. And I'll see you in the next one.